Hey, have you ever found yourself in what seemed to be a hopeless situation where everything was falling apart, everything was going wrong, and it just seemed hopeless? Well, here's what you have to understand. Our God specializes in hopeless situations. As a matter of fact, the Bible is full of hopeless situations that God turned around. And today I want to talk to you about one of those stories where God specialized in someone's hopeless situation. You might just find yourself encouraged today. Have you ever watched a video of someone restoring something? Well, one of my favorite things to watch is whenever they take an old junky car, maybe like out of an old junkyard, and they take it and they restore it into something even more beautiful than it was to begin with. Well, Jesus has been doing that for over 2,000 years. And today I want to talk to you about a story of a woman who God restored in a mighty way. It's found in Luke chapter 8 and verse 40 is where I'm going to start reading today. It says, when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Just then, a man named Jairus came. He was a leader of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and pleaded with him to come to his house because he had only his one and only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. While he was going, the crowds were nearly crushing him. A woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years who had spent all she had on doctors and yet could not be healed by any approached him from behind and touched the end of his robe. Instantly, her bleeding stopped. So here she was. This woman was in a desperate situation, bleeding for 12 years. This meant that she was ostracized from Jewish society, that she could not get close to anyone. She could not go to the synagogue. There was no one that could help her. I mean, look at what it said. It said that she had spent all she had on doctors. And the Bible says instead of getting better, she only grew worse. So she found herself in a hopeless situation. Everything was falling apart. Everything was going wrong. Somehow, some way, she heard about Jesus. She heard about the healing power, the restoration power that Jesus was bringing to people. So what she did, she gave herself one more chance. She had just a little bit of hope, just a little bit of hope inside of her. And she, she approaches from behind. The Bible says that the crowd was pressing in on Jesus. And if she would have been found out, she was breaking the law and she could have been stoned for pressing through those people that were pressing in on Jesus. But this hope, it pushed her to the point to where she was so desperate, she just reached out and she touched the hem of his garment, believing that healing power was coming from him, believing that the Old Testament truth about healing coming from the Messiah was coming from Jesus because she was believing that he was the Messiah. And what happened? The Bible says that as soon as she touched him, right there at that moment, she was healed. She was restored. She was, God did a mighty rejuvenating work inside of her. Let me ask you something. Has God done that for you? Have you been transformed from the inside out? Has he taken your hopeless situations and totally turned them around? Well, here's what happened then. It says that after she touched him from behind, she instantly, her bleeding stopped. Then it said, in verse 45, it says, who touched me, Jesus asked. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think really that Jesus needed information? I mean, he was 100% God and a 100% man. He didn't ever need anybody to give him information. He knew what had happened, but he wanted her to explain what had happened to her. It's like you today. You do realize something, that God expects you to be testifying about the transformation that's happened in and through your life to be telling others about that. Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. When the woman saw that she was discovered, she came trembling and fell before him. In the presence of all the people, she declared that she was the one who touched him. And look at this, here's what Jesus says. Jesus said, daughter, do you realize something? That's the only time in the Bible that Jesus referred to a person as daughter he said to her he said daughter your faith has saved you go in peace shalom wholeness it isn't just what we think of peace today as just not being in conflict what jesus was saying is that you now have been made whole see that is the restoration work of god in our life it isn't just that you're just okay he gets you back to ground level 
See, restoration means you're better than you were before. When you are a new creation in Christ, then that means transformation is taking place in your heart. And listen, you're not just okay. You now have shalom. You now have wholeness. You now have the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through your life. See, that's the great thing about the restoration power of God in us. It's better than anything we could ever imagine in this world. And here's the amazing thing, that God expects us to be a part of his restoration work. He calls us to join him in his workshop. We are to become co-restorers, stepping into the junkyards of others, into their lives, into their messes, into their wrecks, and bringing the grace and the love of Jesus Christ into their lives. That same thing that we've received, we are to be giving to others so that they can experience the restorative work of the Holy Spirit in their lives to restore them. So dear friend, today, if you feel like a broken down car, if you feel like everything is falling apart, if you feel hopeless where you are today, remember God specializes in hopeless situations. He has a remarkable plan for your life. He has a kingdom purpose for you. If you're just willing to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then he has got wonderful plans for your life. See what Jesus does is Jesus brings us from worthlessness to worth. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Man, if we can just grasp that, that truth right there, that we are chosen race, I mean, a, a royal priesthood, that we in Christ Jesus our believer, priest. We've got connection with God, direct access to heaven when we pray. We don't have to go to another man. We go directly to the source. Man, listen, it is a good thing to be restored. And here's what you have to understand about your restoration. Your value is not based on your works. Your value is based on your position. You see, whenever you position yourself under the authority rule of Jesus, that's when the restoring takes place. The restoring takes place in your life. Now you have been changed from the inside out. Your value is not based on what you can do and you can do. Your value is based on your position. You're a child of the King. You're in Christ Jesus. You now are in the best position you possibly could be in. So let's turn back to that junkyard. I want you now to envision a, a, a junky car going into a workshop right out of the junkyard and then see it coming out the other side, totally restored, more beautiful and more valuable than it ever was before. You see, this is a great illustration of the restoration work of Jesus in the life of a believer is that he changes everything, goes back, just scrubs everything down from the inside out, new bolts, new carriage, new, new, new motor, new everything, new interior, exterior, new paint, everything looks, sounds, smells, totally different. Everything has changed. Oh, is it the same vehicle? Yes, but has it changed? Very much so. It doesn't even look, sound, or act like the same one it was. See, that's what happens to us. In the restoring work of God, hey, we are still that same person, but we've been totally transformed. We don't look the same. We don't sound the same. We don't operate the same. Everything has changed in us from the inside out. Now we have been restored. So let me encourage you with this today, dear friend. You now, as a part of God's vast redemptive narrative, you now have been called into the workshop with him to do the restoring work in the lives of others. Oh, hey, here's the good news. You don't have to be a technician. You don't have to, have to know what you're doing. All you gotta know is what God has done for you. All you've gotta do is tell other people about the restoring work that God has and is doing in your life. That's the good news today. So you are called today to be in Christ Jesus, to be transformed. So as we always say on this channel, here's what you've got to be doing. You've got to be digging in, reading your Bible, praying, stirring your affections for Jesus. When you're doing all these things, then the restoring work of God is happening in your life today. Hey, thank you 
for watching today. I appreciate it so much. Hit that like button if you like this today. Share it with somebody else if you think it may encourage them. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment down in the comments. Just amen would be a blessing to me. It would be great. Thank you for joining me today. Pray today that you're enjoying and feeling and experiencing the transforming work of God in your life.